I'm Katherine Gordon, the Sugar Freedom Woman, adding more carnivore results. The Water Story Once upon a time, there was a thirsty woman. She went to the kitchen and poured herself a glass of cool, clear water. Then she drank the water. When the glass was empty, she set it down and walked away because her thirst was quenched and she was satisfied. The End I watched a video recently by Dr. Sirwin, and I will link in the description to the video that I watched, talking about carbohydrate cravings. And he introduced the notion of the glass of water, that when the body is dealing with its legitimate necessities, food, water, sleep, that once those are satisfied, the body is done and you get to go on with your life. My issue is that the foods that I started eating in early childhood, I was born in the 60s, and so that was the age where we started eating things like breakfast cereals, and I don't know, maybe toaster waffles and things like that. Very early on, I discovered that the foods that I was eating were not leaving me satisfied, and that I was constantly searching for more to eat, more to eat. Once I discovered carnivore, and once I gave myself permission for a certain period of time to eat meat and eggs only, what I found was that meat and eggs, a little bit of heavy cream, carnivore-ish, I react to those foods the same way I react to a simple glass of water. I get full, I get satisfied, and I'm done. So I'll give you an example. This morning I made two eggs and I had the uh, tenderloin off of a t-bone and then a little bit of the sirloin, put it on a plate, sat down, one slice of bacon, and I ate that meal and I felt full and satisfied and I simply finished and I was done and I got on with my life. Sometimes, and this is very rare for me because I am a carbohydrate addict, a sugar addict, sometimes I'll sit down to a carnivore meal and I won't even finish it. I'll actually be able to get up and walk away from a plate of food. And if you're a carbohydrate addict or if you've ever dealt with food addiction of any, any kind, this is, it's like a miracle, simply to be able to be done and to walk away. I first started Carnivore in March of 2018, thanks to Dr. Sean Baker, the author of The Carnivore Diet, and I discovered his program. I was on Facebook, and he, I did his March Meatness, where there was a group of us who were like, for the month of March, we ate meat. So that was more than two years, years ago. And I'd like to describe to you how I use the carnivore diet as a lifestyle diet. One story I would also like to tell you is years ago when I was living in Studio City and I was pursuing an acting career, but I couldn't get lean enough for the camera. I would starve myself, I'd get down to about 117 pounds, and the work would come in. You know, the, the commercials, some little film roles, some little independent roles, they, they would come in. But I could never keep my weight down because I was constantly hungry. Well, during that time, Vince Gironda had his studio on Ventura Boulevard in Studio City. Unfortunately, instead of going to Vince's gym, I went across the street to the Holiday Health Spa and did a lot of cardio and was hungry all the time. I could never manage or control my appetite, constantly hungry. If I had known that I could have gone carnivore, I wonder what would have been different with my life and my career. But that's another story and that's okay because I kind of like the life I have now. Met my husband, had a lovely son, it's good. However, the point is Vince Gironda at that time and even decades before had introduced to his clients a steak and egg diet. So the bodybuilders that he worked with, men and women, they were already, when they wanted to get lean and strong, they wanted to get lean, but they wanted to shape and build muscle, they followed a steak and egg protocol years ago. And now today, Dr. Baker and Dr. Saladino, a number of medical doctors are now talking about this concept of going ahead and just eating meat. It satisfies, it nourishes, and it allows you to get on with your life. I would like to tell you about the experiment that is coming up for me. I'm pretty much just eating eggs and meat, a little bit of heavy cream in my coffee. However, my husband and my son are normal eaters and we do grow vegetables and we have wild blackberries that are getting ripe in the garden. We have squash, carrots, and tomatoes. When they ripen, I do want to see if I can incorporate them into my nutrition plan and see if my weight and my appetite stays stable. I do know that tomatoes are nightshades. 
I do know that carrots are below ground vegetables and they tend to have a little bit more sugar in them, so I will be very aware and I'll be very cautious. The other things that I'll be looking for is any changes in digestion. When I try to add back too much fiber and definitely when I eat things like nuts, oh my goodness, my digestion is terrible. I do suffer. When I go back to meat, meat and eggs, everything is fine. Oh my goodness, it's so great to have normal digestion when you've experienced the other issues. So I am gonna be watching for that and making sure that when I add back the homegrown carrots and squash and tomatoes, and maybe a few of the wild blueberries, if I start to see issues with my digestion, with my joints, and especially with my appetite, I'm going to go ahead and leave them out. The wonderful news that I wanna share with my readers and my listeners and my watchers is this concept. You can eliminate the foods that are making you hungry, that are giving you cravings, that are giving you joint pain, that are giving you digestive issues, you can give yourself permission to take those foods out and find the foods that work for you. The foods that make you feel the same way a nice glass of water makes you feel when you're thirsty, leaves you quenched, nourished, satisfied, so you can go on with your day and the other things that you love to do. Like, share, subscribe. My nutrition system is available at sugarfreedom.com. Be well, everybody.